past 24 hours, Hezbollah has fired over 200 projectiles by some accounts between 200 and 250 projectiles into Israel and these rockets and missiles haven't just been fired in the area of northern Israel, usually Haifa where I am right now and Galil. These are the areas that are directly in the line of fire apart from of course short range rockets that are fired in, in Metula and Rosh Nikra which are quite up north. That is where the real action is taking place. That's the area that's been declared a um, designated military zone but even towards central Israel there are multiple rockets that were fired in the past 24 hours especially in the last 12 hours as Israel observes the Yom Kippur day and while all those rockets and projectiles have been neutralized in the past 24 hours there are reports of some damage to property uh, fortunately no uh, no loss of life loss of life was reported day before yesterday when two civilians were severely injured and one later succumbed to injuries because of intense bleeding in that rocket attack but at the same time israel too has stepped up its offensive against the hezbollah in Lebanon, Israel has fired uh, a large number of, pro uh, of uh, rockets and missiles and, and air-to-ground rockets uh, that have been fired even in the heart of Beirut. The death toll in Beirut has now risen to 22. The injuries, we are told by some accounts, has crossed over 100. And parts of eastern Beirut that were never targeted even in the 2006 conflict or the conflicts before that, those areas have also been targeted by Israel in Lebanon and this is what makes the situation extremely extremely precarious and I want to quickly take you to ground zero directly in the line of fire is India today's Ashutosh Mishra reporting from ground zero Ashutosh newer areas are now in the line of the Israeli fire not just restricted to southern Lebanon but even in Beirut the capital newer areas have been targeted what's the latest that you can tell us about the ground situation right now It's all chaos and fear. Mostly people see Gaurav I uh, staying indoors, largely the big market despite this being uh, a holiday. A uh, Friday, Saturday happens to be the holiday. I see mostly the places uh, deserted. All these markets are uh, unusual that are usually crowded are looking totally unusual. The Mediterranean line behind me where on the weekends you see the number of fishermen or the locals with their boats and yachts venturing out uh, absolutely maintaining a calm and here forget the situation about the south this is what happening in the central and the eastern part largely flooded with the tourists of course we have seen and no tourists almost all have evacuated but in the meanwhile since this morning you mentioned about the Hezbollah attack in the in the northern Israel there have been similar offensive by the uh, the Israeli Air Force particularly at uh, you know uh, tracking the trajectory of these projectiles were fired upon so since this morning there have been two major air strike uh, in Ghassania area and also in Zepta and Nabatia so three major air strike have been carried out since this morning as we speak the Iranian speaker uh, had just landed on his way to uh, Sweden where he was going to meet uh, uh, the union of the speakers of all over the world gathering just before he made a surprise halt on the invitation of the Iranian speaker uh, on the uh, invitation of a Lebanese speaker the Iranian parliament speaker uh, Mohammad Bagheer Garifab just made uh, a surprise landing at the Beirut airport he stayed there for a couple of uh, hours he met the uh, Lebanese speaker extending the support to the resistance for Forces, the Hezbollah, they're fighting uh, on the cause of Palestine. Okay. But what it looks like, uh, larger the reason, because the way Hezbollah has brought this uh, battle at the doorstep for Lebanon, uh, for the civilians of Lebanon, this is now literally dragging the entire region further, Gaurav.